So Nicola Sturgeon has finally achieved independence. Unfortunately for her, it's independence from her job, not independence for Scotland. But just a few months ago, the SNP were riding high in the polls and Sturgeon looked unstoppable. Where did it all go wrong? We've probably seen headlines about a Scottish double rapist being put in a women's prison, the Scottish Nationalist Party passing gender laws, and Sturgeon being unable to say what a woman is. Here's a little explainer. The Scottish Government recently passed the Gender Reform Bill. Gender Reform Bill sounds like a Scottish guy called Bill who invented the kilt. It's not. It's a piece of legislation that makes it much easier for people to officially change their gender just by self-identifying. Instead of having to live as a woman for two years, have a medical diagnosis and convince a panel of medical experts, any bloke in Scotland can just recite the magic spell I'm a woman. And they magically become a woman in the eyes of the law. It's like giving someone a pilot's license because they say they can land a 747. What could possibly go wrong? The gender reform bill also allowed people to transition younger. Sexual health clinics in Scotland are treating children as young as nine for gender dysphoria. I know this seems young, but under the SNP, life expectancy in Scotland has come down so far. Nine is basically middle-aged. I'm not going to have a go at Scottish sexual health clinics, by the way. They've got way more dirt on me than I've got on them. Being able to magically become a woman by just self-identifying as a woman is great, by the way, for women like me, who need access to women's spaces because we want somewhere clean to take a dump and also we want to blag a few days off work with period pain each month. But some people had concerns that self-ID could be abused by predatory men to get access to women's spaces such as prisons. So they asked for a clause in the Gender Reform Bill excluding convicted rapists from being able to self-ID. But Sturgeon said that this would never happen. Men would never exploit this new law. And anyone who opposed this law for these reasons was a transphobe. She also said that they were misogynist and racist, which seems bizarre until you realise it's just a technique used by the left to shut down debate. Like when Justin Trudeau accused the truckers of being transphobic racists. Words like racist, misogynist, far-right extremists, they don't actually have any objective meaning anymore. They're just used as a label to smear people who won't acquiesce to the left's demands. Anyway, Sturgeon said that predatory males would never use self-ID to gain access to women's spaces. The very next day, a bloke called Adam Graham was being tried for double rape and decided during the court proceedings that he was actually a woman called Isla Bryson, despite being a big muscly male with facial tattoos like Mike Tyson and a big wanger that he raped with. Nevertheless, under Scottish gender ideology, he was now a she because he said so, so lawyers in the court case had to refer to her penis and she was transferred to a Scottish women's prison. The dream of gender ideology met the hard reality of Isla Bryson's dick. People were in uproar over this. They said, whatever pronouns are being used, this is a convicted rapist, a risk to women in prison who are the most vulnerable women in society. I mean, this is over-egging it a bit. This is a Scottish prison. These are the least vulnerable women you could possibly get. Isla Bryson would have probably been the most feminine woman in there. He'd be getting stubble rash off the real women. They'd have clits bigger than his wanger. Anyway, Sturgeon had to backtrack over the uproar and move Isla to a male prison, which would suggest that she actually thinks that Isla is in fact a man. But under Sturgeon's gender reform bill, he's a woman. Sturgeon couldn't make it make sense, as she revealed in these interviews. My question is, are all trans Look, women women? This you haven't is, answered that question. Well, that's not the point that we're dealing with that's here. That's the question I'm asking. Trans women are, are women, but in the prison context, there is no automatic right for a trans woman. So there are contexts where a trans woman is not a woman? No, there is, <laughs> there is circumstances in which a trans woman uh, will be housed in the male prison estate. Because is there any the context in which a woman born as a woman will be housed in the male estate? Look, we're talking here about trans women. And I'm now asking about women born as women. Uh, I don't think there are circumstances there, uh, but... So it's different for trans women? Well, yes, and I, I'm not... So they're not equal? That is not... The, there is a risk assessment process done for trans women that takes account of the nature of the crime. Uh, clearly, uh, significant concern arises out of sexual crime and whether it's appropriate for them to be in a female prison or a male prison. Trans women are women, but in the prison context, they're not. Women don't stop being women when they commit crimes. This makes absolutely zero sense. In interviews, she still referred to Isla Bryson as her. Uh, my comments about her, uh, the, the person being a rapist is in context of what should happen to them within the prison service. I think you just referred to Isla Bryson using the word her. 
Does that mean you do, in fact, think Don't she is a woman? Anything into? It. I, I am trying you to rationally. To individual. Look, you started I, saying I'm, her. Why did you say that? I, you, I, I can't remember. I'll it take your word for it. it. Well, like fine. A Freudian Look, slip I'm, I'm trying of not to. As a woman, but we've all been asking you, and you've been running away from the uh, the question. We have been asking you for days. Do you regard Isla Bryson as a she woman? Regards herself as a woman. I regard uh, the individual as a rapist and in the context, to say whether the, the context of the prison service what matters man. is that uh, the individual was convicted of rape and that is what we're talking about here and that's what I will continue to, to focus on. As the interviewer points out, Sturgeon still refers to Isla Bryson as her. But if Isla is a woman, why was she sent to a male prison? Then Sturgeon says she identifies Isla as a rapist. Rapist isn't a gender. At best, it's a sexuality. And really, it's a crime. And banning rapists from women's prisons doesn't offer much protection anyway, when only 2% of rapists are convicted. Extreme gender ideology is a farce. A child could tell you that a hulking, tattooed brute like Isla Bryson isn't a woman. When politicians can't say what a child can point out, they look like idiots. And when politicians don't stay true to the rules that they've created, we lose faith in them and the rules. There are obvious incentives for predatory males to exploit self-ID, as well as getting access to female-only spaces. They get a new name, so any crimes they've committed are recorded under their old name. Anybody searching for their new name won't find those crimes. They're expunged. But the SNP's consultation on this bill didn't take into account any of these concerns from gender-critical people, aka people with common sense. They consulted trans rights activists. It seems to me that the more aggressively someone campaigns for trans rights, the less effort they make with their own transition. Here are some of the consulted trans women sitting in the gallery of the Scottish Parliament as the gender reform bill was passed. It's like a lineup on Never Mind the Buzzcocks where contestants have to guess who the real 80s heavy metal bassist is. Is it number one, Twisted Sister? Is it number two, Twisted Testicle? Is it number three, Van Halen? Or could it be number four, Van Driver? Is it number five, White Snake? Or is it number six, Visible Trouser Snake? It's like a Little Britain sketch. You might think I'm being mean, and yeah, I am, but it's meaner to give predatory men access to women's prisons, particularly as most women in prison are victims of domestic violence. How does someone's feelings that they're a gender override other people's right to be safe? Also, Scottish trans rights activists aren't always super nice to women themselves. Here's a trans activist screaming witch at a woman outside the Scottish Parliament. I'm assuming that particular trans activist goes by the pronouns meat and loaf. And here's three SNP politicians photographed in front of this sign that says decapitate TERFs. TERF stands for trans exclusionary radical feminists, or basically most women. The SNP are usually very tough on hate speech. A feminist called Marion Miller was arrested for tweeting a picture of a suffragette ribbon. People said it was a hate crime because the ribbon could be perceived to be a noose. It couldn't. It's clearly a suffragette ribbon and you couldn't hang anything bigger than a hamster from it. But SNP politicians standing in front of a sign wishing decapitation on women? That's fine, apparently. Why did the SNP go down this weird rabbit hole of extreme gender ideology in the first place? Voters don't like it. Polls show that only about a quarter of Scots approve of self-ID or younger teens being able to legally change gender. Well, the SNP are desperate to make Scotland more progressive than England, to push the case for independence. They strive to be more inclusive, even when that means including rapists in women's prisons or including sex change hormones in children's breakfasts. The SNP jump on any issue that can drive a wedge between them and Westminster, particularly if it's a progressive idea that will appeal to the idealistic, gullible and hideously ugly youth of Scotland who support the independence dream. So higher taxes, open borders immigration, rent controls, climate change policy in a country with a climate that needs changing. If there's a terrible idea, the SNP want to implement it, particularly if it leads to a battle with Westminster that leaves the SNP looking progressive. They thought that the gender reform bill would play out like this. They knew Westminster would have to step in to stop it becoming law, as it affects the rest of the UK. Any Brit could jump on the bus to Scotland, change their gender and come back without going through any of the necessary steps. 
They thought Westminster would look like the regressive old-fashioned ogres, stopping the SNP's caring, sharing progressives from letting trans women lead the authentic life they wanted. Instead, it's made some Scots realise what an independent Scotland would look like, and they don't like it. The one upside of the gender reform bill is that it leaves the door open for a trans replacement for Nicola Sturgeon. Ladies and gentle thems, I present to you Alexia Salmond. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please annoy the SNP by sharing it with your mates. And if you'd like to support me making these videos, you can become a Patreon. From as little as £3 a month, you get exclusive content, including Patreon-only episodes of Clown World and a Patreon-only podcast with a criminal barrister. Thanks for watching. I've been Leo Kearse. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.